Hey, what's up, guys? It's Doug, KB2, UKA. I want to give some thoughts on uh, Flex Radio's new release of the 8000 series. And I kind of want to add some common sense into this. So at Dayton, um, well, at Hamvention, they don't call it Dayton anymore, do they? They released the 8000 series. Uh, looks a lot like the 6000 series. Uh, I believe there is an upgraded uh, FPGA. Uh, so it's basically a faster processor inside an almost identical radio. And they released a PowerPoint deck on all the great new features of the radio with the most important one being adaptive pre-distortion. Uh, for those of you that don't know, adaptive pre-distortion uh, prevents IMD artifacts on your transmitted signal. So if you're transmitting at 2.7 kilohertz and you have adaptive pre-distortion turned on, you will only take up 2.7 kilohertz of bandpass. Uh, no matter how dirty your signal is, it'll hold it all together. Uh, for us ESSB guys, we love adaptive pre-distortion uh, because when we go 4 kilohertz wide, we only go 4 kilohertz wide. As opposed to other stations that believe they're transmitting at 2.7 or 2.9. And uh, we've all seen it on the pan adapter. They're 6K wide, 8K wide. Gosh, some guys have all the dials turned to the right. And uh, they're 10K wide. And then they come in and yell at somebody who has a nice clean 4 kilohertz uh, bandpass. But I digress. That's another topic. So what makes the 8000 series really cool is that it has adaptive pre-distortion. The only catch is that adaptive pre-distortion will not work until Smart SDR is updated to allow adaptive pre-distortion to work. So I believe the radios are supposed to ship August of 2024 this summer. And the uh, anticipated release date of the upgraded Smart SDR software is August of 2025, a year from now. Now, I've heard over the years that Flex Radio is not great at upgrading features in their software. Um, there's a big joke on the Flex Radio enthusiast page that I that a handful of people are waiting for uh, Squelch. Um, I didn't know Squelch was such a big deal for HF, but to each their own, they're waiting for it, and it never came. Uh, what is a big deal for HF is noise reduction, NR. And um, I owned a Flex radio for about seven months. I owned a 6600, and, um, you know, the, let me give credit where credit's due. Flex has remote operation, I'm not going to say down pat because it fails at times, especially with their server, uh, but they pretty much have cracked the code with turnkey uh, remote usage. And that was very cool. I'd drive around in my car and on the, my Bluetooth uh, system in the car, I was able to connect to the radio uh, via uh, my Wi-Fi in the car and uh talk on 40 meters or 80 meters from the car. That was very cool. Um, but a lot of users have been waiting for software updates that seem to never come. Uh, this is not my opinion. This is what I have read and been told numerous times uh, from other amateur radio operators that own Flex Radio. Uh, so to go back, I owned a Flex Radio if I couldn't get it, it might be my fault. I, I might not know how to process audio. I couldn't get it to sound as good as the Anon um, or as good as I hear other people sounding on a four or $500 Hermes light. From a phone standpoint, um, it wasn't for me. So I ended up using it with the Mac uh, Smart SDR software pretty much as an FT8 machine. And again, Flawless, okay? Uh, especially with um, Smart SDR on the Mac, all the digital transmitting softwares are all built into that Smart SDR. So it was very, very cool. 
Um, but you know, five months rolled by, six, seven months rolled by, and uh, it was it was sitting here in the shack. And I said, you know what? I'm only using it for FT8. I set up FT8 with the Apache, and uh, that works flawlessly, also. And uh, so I sold the 6600. I think I got a few hundred dollars less uh, than I paid for it. Well, come this past Hamvention, 8,000 comes out. And uh, I'm glad I sold the 6,000 because what Flex did by releasing pretty much the exact same radio with a faster processor, they devalued all the 6,000 radios. Uh, let me go back. This isn't scripted. So <clears throat> my train of thoughts all over the place. So let's go back to the software update. How many years, if you're a Flex user, how many years have you been working, uh, waiting for a working NR2? Excuse me, noise reduction. I think a lot. And uh, I don't think you've received it. So my question is, if there are simple features in Smart SDR that you've been waiting for, and now we have a release of a new radio that has a killer feature that is reliant solely on a software update. Where is the confidence coming from that it will actually be achieved a year from now? So what I did a few weeks ago, I think three weeks ago, I went on the Flex Enthusiast page and I called out Flex Radio and I asked them, I believe you will sell more 8,000s I, I might buy one. I'm a Flex buyer. I have owned a Flex radio. Uh, I said, I believe you'll sell more radios if you can show us a video of adaptive pre-distortion working on an 8000 series. And, um, you know, I, I'd say the comments on the post were 50-50. A lot of people liked it. A lot of people laughed at it. There's going to be fanboys on every product page, okay? Um, I'm not a fanboy of Apache Labs. They have a lot of issues. I'm not a fanboy of Flex Radio. They have a lot of issues. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's normally a duck. So Flex finally replied to that post, and instead of saying we're working on releasing a video or we're working on the adaptive pre-distortion so that the software update can be completed uh, August 2025, like we stated at Hamvention, instead of maybe even posting a video, because that would have been cool, would have been cool to have a video at Hamvention, saying, look, we don't have it working flawlessly yet, but here's how it's gonna work, here's a video of it working in our lab. Um, instead of any of that, they basically told me to not be rude, and people buy their radios for many reasons. And my response to Flex is, if people buy your radios for many reasons, and your biggest new feature is reliant on a software update, why'd you release a new radio? Because it does the exact same thing that the 6,000 series of radios do. Um, so that's it. We have, a history, we have a company that has a history of not updating their software. Their main new feature of their new radio is solely reliant on updating their software. And we are a year out. And instead of addressing a very logical question or a logical ask of show us the working prototype, show us the software, and, and and by the way, guys, okay, because I know I'm going to get comments on this video. I'm not asking to see inside the radio. I'm not asking to see the code, okay? Smart SDR, there's videos of it all over YouTube. There, anyone who buys the radio can buy Smart SDR. I'm asking to see a screen capture of Smart SDR showing the correction process because, man, with the history of their software updates and the features not being available or ever coming, if they don't have a working prototype now, are they gonna be able to have it ready in a year? 
noise reduction. How many years has it been? So my suggestion, don't sell your 6,000. God, that first announcement, so many of them went for sale and they're all devalued. Don't sell your 6,000 because you're buying the same radio if you pick up an 8,000. Hold on to your 6,000, continue to use it without adaptive pre-distortion because the 8,000 doesn't have it. Pick yourself up a three, four, five hundred dollar Hermes light. It'll outperform the 6,000 series radio to begin with and the 8,000 series radio. Wait the year. If the software update never comes, the value of your 6,000 will go back up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave some comments down below and uh, have fun out there. KB2 UKA clear.